think about guitar amps and the history of guitar amps and the manufacturers that have built them over the years, a few major brands come to mind. The legends, the staples, the standards, if you will, and that's Marshall, Vox, and Fender. Now, I would actually put Orange in that category of legends because although they were a little late to the game compared to Vox, Fender, and Marshall, I think they've had just as big of an impact on the music scene over the last five decades as those big three brands. And their amps have been used by such a wide variety of players and bands over the years that it's kind of actually hard to pin down the orange sound, but we're going to today. Before we jump into the amps, a real quick history lesson. In the late 1960s, around 68, a man named Cliff Cooper opens up a shop slash recording studio in the heart of London called the Orange Shop. It was painted orange. It looked like a pretty wild place, to be honest. Now, Cooper, who was a musician, had been playing in a few bands around London and opened up a small recording studio in the Orange Shop. And this was after a few years of experimenting with some small transistor amp designs that he created to try and be able to play with headphones on. In fact, a few years earlier to this, he had pitched one of these designs, the Pixie, to Tom Jennings of Vox fame. And Jennings apparently very kindly said no, they weren't interested in it. Now, in 1968, when Cooper opened the shop, it was kind of off to a rocky start. They had trouble getting suppliers at the time from the big brands. They couldn't get Marshalls or Gibsons or Fenders. And in order to keep the doors open, Cooper actually had to sell his band's equipment. He, they owned a few Vox amps at the time. He actually had to sell those through the shop in order to pay the rent. And that actually became how the shop operated for the next few years. They were selling used gear to musicians around London. Now, luckily for Cooper at the time, the used gear market around London was pretty hot because apparently players of the time preferred the older used amps and guitars because they thought they sounded and played better, which actually sounds somewhat familiar. But they continued to have issues with getting new stuff in stock. And so this led Cooper and the team at the Orange Shop to start developing their own guitar amplifier. And this is where Matt Mathias enters the story. Around the fall of 1968, Cooper reached out to Mathias, who was the owner and operator of a company called Radiocraft, to help develop their first amplifier. Radiocraft at the time had a hi-fi amp that they were using, and after playing it, Cooper decided that they needed to make some revisions to it to make it a more guitar-friendly amp, something guitar players of the time actually wanted to play, which meant louder, more sustain, which equated to more distortion. So they set off in designing what would become the Matt amp, which was used by players like Jimmy Page and Paul Kossoff and Peter Green, plenty of other famous players around London in the late 60s through the early 70s. Now from the beginning, Orange was kind of their own thing. As you can see, their branding is completely different than Fender, Fox, or Marshall. Everything from the orange Tolex to the shape and design of the head and the cabinets themselves, all the way to the actual sound. They don't really sound like anything else out there. And in fact, the amp that I was playing at the beginning of the video, my orange, is this AD30. Now, this is not an old orange from the late 70s. In fact, this is from the Gibson era of orange. In the late 1990s, Gibson actually took over the orange brand and started reissuing them, remanufacturing a lot of the amps, and they designed this, the single channel AD30 from around 1998. Now, I absolutely adore this amplifier, but the reality is, this isn't really the orange sound. This is the orange sound. This orange right here is one of the earliest ones. It's an orange mat amp. It's actually serial number 260, and it was built in 1971. I actually bought it from the original owner. And this is really the first orange design. Matt Mathias, who owned mat amp or started mat amp, built them for orange before they came out with the graphic. And then this particular one, which is the OR120. This is actually a 90s Gibson reissue, but it's essentially 
exactly the same as the original ones because I had the tech from Orange, who's based here in Atlanta, redo it to the original specs. The one on the bottom here is the Orange Overdrive. This is from 1973. This is essentially a master volume version of this, but it's but it has way more gain. I mean, it's not the same circuit, but the concept was that it's a master volume version of this. This is a really aggressive mid forward amp. And to me, this is, these two are really the orange sound. This is kind of the transition. You'll hear the difference between them, but uh, I love this amp. This mad amp, orange mad amp, ha is actually painted, right? If you you can feel that it's, it's been uh, stamped out and then painted in with black paint. And it's really cool. This must have been a really early version. Yeah, it's definitely pre-hieroglyphics and pre, you know, orange faceplate design. And then weren't, weren't you saying that the Gibson era reissues from the 90s were using leftover parts from the yeah, 70s? Yeah, the early ones were, were using leftover parts, from what I understand, from the original ones from the 70s. They just bought all the stuff that was in the factory. This particular amp, if you look at Led Zeppelin Live, you'll see it on stage with Jimmy Page all the time. You'll see it in the background with Peter Green. This is, though, what Jimmy Page played his theremin through because it's a very clean, sparkly, high-powered amp. three of these oranges have this. This is the FAC control. It says FAC here, but it says depth here. And it says depth because it's really the, it's like a bass control. All the way to the left has less bass. And as you turn it to the right, it uh, has more bass. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six different positions there. Studio stage, this is like your drive thing. This is stepped also. Obviously bass treble boost. This is high frequency boost. Same thing that you see up here, high frequency drive similar volume control the or 120 here this is your bass because it has a backwards bass clef treble clef that's treble high frequency drive gain that's the volume this is not a master volume though obviously fac and then if we go to, down to the bottom here fac bass treble added presence knob from the or 120 gain knob right master volume. This thing really cranks. close like the that or120 and the mad amp are not that far off no it's just that this is just got more power yeah but the clean tone like on the neck pickup with Very the similar. tone the volume rolled off is really really close yeah yeah so Overdrive is not quite the same. No. The the mad app I feel like had more low end, more punch. Yep.
Yeah, man. So how would you describe that as being different than like a Marshall or a Vox? Uh, I think it has even more mids than a Marshall does. Yeah. Um, and it has different type of mids than, than a Vox does. Right. And more gain than a Vox does. More gain than a Vox does, yeah. Especially this overdrive. Yeah. I mean, if you hit a Vox with a with a just a boost pedal or something like that, it had plenty of gain, plenty of gain. Right. But this is really, you know, that's got some. I mean, you wouldn't call it a high gain amp, but it's it's a uh, definitely a early '70s rock sound. Right. Well, you can understand why a lot of the early metal guys of the time went with that because it, it's not high gain by today's standards, but by the 70s standards. No, and a lot of guys will go with this or this with a pedal in front of it with fuzz or something like yeah. that. This one though has that So now I think that's a pretty good representation of the Orange sound. Now, with a company like Orange that's been around as long as they have been, I mean, they're still continuing to produce and manufacture new amp designs today, it's a little difficult to nail down what the Orange sound is. But to me, the original amps, the ones they first started creating in the late 60s and early 70s, that is the Orange sound. So how do we go about getting that at home in our own rig? Most of us don't have access to an early matte amp or an OR120. I've done some experimentation and this is the best thing that I've come up with with my current rig and pedal selection. I think pairing a good amp in a box overdrive with a good EQ boost in front of it can actually get you pretty close to the orange sound. So right here you can see I've got a Rev G2 pedal which is a medium gain amp in a box from Rev. It's emulating the green channel from one of their amps but it actually does the sort of Marshall JTM 45 thing quite well. And in front of that, I've got a new pedal, a Dojo Para Boost from Lawrence Petros Design. Now, this is a collaboration between Lawrence Petros and a good buddy of mine, Dave Honorado. Basically, Dave came to LPD and pitched this idea of having a boost pedal with a really surgical EQ, and this is what they came up with. That's a great utility pedal to have around. This video is not sponsored or anything, but I figured I'd give my buddies Dave and Lawrence a quick plug. So I've got my Novo Ceres J plugged into my Port City Pearl, and since I don't have an orange cap, Cabinet. I'm actually using the Torpedo Captor X with an orange virtual cabinet that they have from Two Notes, and it actually sounds really good. So, completely clean, no overdrive, no real color coming from the amp itself. Now, let's hear what the Rev is doing. Pretty standard Marshall in a box type sound. And as you can tell, it's not really close to the oranges that we were just getting. Now I have pushed the mid range a little bit in an effort to try and find that sort of mid range character that the matte amp had, but it's not really doing it on its own. So let's hear the para boost on its own before we combine them. Now, as you can tell, because I'm clipping the input section of Luna here, there's a lot of boost coming from that pedal. But because we're going into the overdrive, we're actually not gonna get that big of a volume boost going into the front end of our amp. Rather, we're gonna get more gain out of the G2, which is what I want. But what's really going on here is the mid frequency. Here are these two knobs. You have the mid frequency and the amount of gain that you're boosting that frequency. And I've dialed it into what I think is pretty close to the OR120 and the Matt Amps mid boost, although I don't have you know any kind of oscilloscope or anything to really find. I'm just going off of what I'm hearing. So we'll kick on the G2 again and then turn on the para boost so you can hear what I think is pretty close to the orange sound. Now that's a good starting point. We can experiment a little bit here on the rev with switching this drive. And 
That's a little too gainy though, so I'm gonna bring the gain back on the G2 just a little bit because again, we are hitting the front end of this pedal super hard now. And I want a little bit more low end going into the front. The thing about those oranges that I really liked was the amount of low end that they had. There's a really, really present round bottom end. Now the final test is gonna be rolling off the volume on your guitar and seeing how it cleans up. My favorite thing about that Mad Amp in the OR120 was the sparkling clean tones that you could get out of it. The cleans sound to me way better than a Marshall's cleans, for example. sound and orange if you guys are watching this i think you should bring back the original or120 do it like you did in the late 60s it's a really special amp also while you're at it i say bring back this amp a single channel ad30 from 1998 this is like an ac30 on steroids it does the super sparkly clean chimey ac30 thing but it has way more gain than an ac30 these are really hard to find but if you find one if one pops up around you and you're looking for that ac30 type thing check this out it's jimmy page approved if you'd like to support the channel check out the links in the description box down below you can buy my tone course down there you can sign up for the green room and you can find out more about the gear that i use to make this video those are affiliate links down there so if you buy something i earn a small commission which really helps me out in making this channel happen don't forget backstage live episode four is happening october 10th here on this youtube channel so be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and follow me on instagram at rhett Scholl. that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching and uh, i'll see you on the next episode on what is the sound